This is a demonstration of how to use the Varian NMR spectrometer in walk-up mode. When you come to the instrument, it should have the operator login screen already open. You can log in with your normal NMR username and password. After you log in, first thing you want to do is to create a new study. So click on this button here to start a new study. Now it may take a while to update this stuff while it's making a new study. So the next thing I would do is start to put your sample in. So we want to click eject and it will eventually turn on the eject air. And then we want to get the dummy sample out of the magnet. Don't forget to leave your wallet at the desk so you don't erase your credit cards. Just like on all the walk-up instruments, we always keep a dummy sample in the magnet. This is the tube of D2O. This helps avoid trying to put two samples in the magnet. You can put the dummy sample in the rack and get your sample and put it into the depth gauge. Normally you can push it down to the bottom, but one thing to be aware of is that this can be adjusted here. So best is to make sure that your sample is centered on the center line and the dash box is the detection coil. So you want to make sure that it's symmetrical around the, the detection coil. Once you set the depth correctly, you can put the sample back into the magnet. And then you can come back to the instrument and hopefully by now the study queue has been created. So now we can click insert and our sample should go into the magnet. So the first thing we want to do here is put in a sample name. This is required. It needs to have a sample name um, for every sample. So in this case I'll put in something. You can also fill in these other fields if you want, but those are optional. This comment box is similar to the title box on the Brooker spectrometers. So you can put whatever you want in here. You can put multiple lines of text. You should choose the solvent. Some of the common solvents are here. All of the solvents are available from this drop-down list. And over here you can decide whether you want it to automatically plot or not. I'm going to turn it off. And then if you want automatic locking and shimming. If you want to do manual locking and shimming, you can get to them from these pages over here, but I'm not going to cover that right now. So we're going to do auto lock and auto shim. Okay, once you have all these things set the way you want, then you should add experiments. So if we wanted to add a proton, we can click on the proton and it'll add an experiment to the list. There are multiple tabs here, so not all of the experiments are showing on just this main page here. If you want to customize the experiment, you can double click on it. It'll turn black, and then eventually this screen over here will show up and you can customize whichever experiment has been uh, colored black here. It takes a few seconds before it happens, so just be patient. Uh, it's, it's working, but it it will eventually come up and now it's ready and I can customize it. So probably the main thing you want to change is the number of scans. So we could put in, for example, 16 scans. There are other things that could be changed here, but the default panel has the most common options on it. If you made changes and you want to save those changes, you click on the green button here for save and then it should update the screen over here and it, if we, since we changed the number of scans it's going to update how much time it expects the experiment to take. If we add other experiments they will be run back to back after the, the first one that we have. If you add one by mistake or if you decide not to do it you can get rid of it by dragging it down to the trash can down here. So now it's gone. Okay so we have the one experiment we want to run and it's been set up the way we want to run. We've got these fields all set up and we have our sample in the magnet. One of the main differences between the Varian walk-up system and the Brooker walk-up system is that for Varian you should put your sample in yourself before you submit. 
on the broker, you click submit and then it will tell you to put the sample in. We have the sample in, so now we can click submit. After we click submit, it may not immediately tell you that anything's happening, but don't worry, it is doing something. Um, eventually, it should bring up a screen over here telling us what it's doing, but it may take a few seconds before it does it. Uh, one of the worst things to do is to start clicking on lots of different things while it is processing, and um, that can confuse it and cause the program to crash. If the program does crash or if it's really not doing anything, probably your best bet is to close the program and then um, you can restart it here from, from VNMRJ. So hopefully in this case it will eventually come up. I am going to, I think it's going to go, yeah, it's going here. So it's finally responded here. It says it's setting up a proton. And now it is going to, because we chose automatic lock, it's going to do automatic lock. When it does automatic lock, um, it doesn't call it automatic lock. Instead, it will say finding Z0. So when it's doing finding Z0, that's doing the automatic lock, which will happen in just a second. There it goes. So now it is doing automatic lock. When it finishes with the automatic lock, then it's going to do, because we chose the automatic shim. While it's doing the lock and the shim, don't worry about this solvent. If you put in the solvent correctly when you started, it will be correct. But when it's doing these other experiments, the solvent may be showing something different than what you put in. That's not an issue, so don't worry about it. Okay, it did the auto lock, and now the experiment is set to GMAP Z, which is the experiment that it uses for gradient shimming. And we can see the progress bar down here is doing some gradient shimming. It will do multiple iterations of gradient shimming to try to get the shims to converge. If it cannot get them to converge after several iterations, it'll eventually give up. But depending on how well your sample is able to be shimmed, in this case it was fine. It's done and now it goes immediately on to taking data. So now when it says acquiring proton and this status bar down here will show you how much time is left in your experiment. After it finishes running the experiment, it should come back eventually with the word done. Until it's come back with done, it's not actually finished doing its thing here. So we will just wait for another 20 seconds for it to finish acquiring the proton. When you're finished, then you should put back the dummy sample and then get the system ready for the next person. So it's almost ready here. Okay. Acquisition's done, took some data. So now we can put back the dummy sample. We can do that now as long as it says idle. We can click eject. And eventually it should eject our sample so that we can put back the dummy sample. I'm going to go ahead and get up and wait for it to get ready. There it goes. There, it says done. I may want to try clicking eject one more time. Okay, sample's ejecting. Get your sample. Put back the dummy sample. Remember, the reason we have the dummy sample is that if nothing ejects, don't put your sample in because there might be a sample stuck in the magnet. Main cause of samples being stuck in the magnet is them not being set to the right depth. So make sure that when you put the dummy sample back in, you put it at the right depth.
Okay, finally, we can click insert to put the dummy sample in. And then we can go to file, switch operators. It'll bring back the login screen and it's ready for the next person.